Well, they say change is the only thing constant in this world, but it's not that easy to bring about a big change in any process that we are already used to. Today we will talk to Niru Khosla, who's trying to bring about a huge change in the education system here in the U.S. Let's talk to her. It's an absolute pleasure to welcome you on the show today and honoring you, our Hero of the Month. Uh, we have been very privileged to have this one-on-one -on -one meeting and to understand why you thought of bringing about this huge change that you have envisioned. Well, to be honest with you, part of it is the Indian in me and part of me, part of it is uh, my love for children. And the third part of it is about education. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, combined with all this, we've always been taught that education is very important. And as we were growing up, you know, we, I come from uh, um, not a rich family. And, and the, the thing my parents committed to, uh, you know, above and beyond anything else, was to give us a good education. And so that model kind of stays in your mind and that's helped, you know, it's helped my husband, it's helped, you know, me to think um, beyond, you know, just doing things every day to make a real big impact. And the idea was to kind of say, if we can afford to give our kids good education, how can we make sure that we can give a larger um, group of children. Now you have identified a big problem here mm -hmm. and I heard you say that uh, most of the time kids are on a device, right. on some online or some software or some device and they're not engaging themselves as much in books. And I as a parent can relate to that is because we used to read books and when you don't see your kids doing the same you think something is wrong in the system. Yeah. But you happen to have taken that as an advantage and how are you doing that? Well, I think there are a couple of things we have to, in your sentence, that we have to tear apart, right? One of them is that student, ch children love to read, so think about the Harry Potter books or think about the, um, you know, many of the other um, uh, books that have been successful series, uh, The Hunger King Game, I mean, you know, they love, they love fantasies, they love, you know, kind of get into a book. So some children will still read book. The things that we're talking about really is the textbook. You know, the, the idea of learning uh, through formal education, that doesn't sound as attractive. Because today on, on devices, things are, um, you know, just these little pieces of uh, bits of things that they interact with. And there really isn't anything, I would say, rigor around those. And they, so the tools of today are new. The nascent new innovative tools that are kind of attracting kids, attracting adults. I play words with friends with you know my friends and my sister in India. Uh, you know, so these these things, the devices are very attractive. They've got new format, the color, the sound, the interactivity, which textbooks don't afford us. Well, yeah, it's all about moving forward. Yes. And uh, textbooks were invented many years ago and mm -hmm. probably uh, they're not revised every year. Like things are changing so fast. Exactly. Every year we co come about new things. Uh, but textbooks cannot even keep up with that. So your online mechanism of tutoring through online flex books, as you call it, is, is, is a perfect way to keep up to date but what made you think about this in the first place? Let's go back to that. So go back to that. So one of the things that is I was, uh, I have four kids. And I, was, I had done a molecular biology degree before I had my kids. And I was working in, at Stanford doing some research. And I realized being pregnant, I couldn't be around radioactive elements. So I had to drop that career. And then my next career became my four children and giving them a great education. I got involved with that. Fascinating. I had never seen the kind of education my kids got happen in India or, or, for, or for people like us. So I got very fascinated with that and got involved with that. It was that in, in involvement that kind of made me realize that innovation can happen even in education. Considering we are part of Silicon Valley, it was like seven, eight years ago I was looking around, maybe now ten years ago I was looking around and saying, 
why is it that we haven't innovated in education uh, and used the tools that will, you know, that have become main mainstream tools? Mm -hmm. well, how how come they're not being used in in education? And so I started looking around and I started to see what is the issue, and particularly in the U.S., the public school education system is very prescribed, at least for K-12 mm -hmm. students. And then I said, what was it that, you know, I could tackle? What part of this whole story could I make a difference in? And so when I started looking deeper into it, I realized that, you know, costs so much, the textbook is all technology, it doesn't allow you to experiment or, in, or kind of individualize or customize and to bring in all kind of separate, you know, different pieces of media or information so the students can consume it in a contextualized way. So if you're thinking about uh, photosynthesis, you know, uh, you, can actually, you, you can actually go on a computer and, and be able to learn about photosynthesis not just in a read tech, you know, text modality, you can actually go in there and start thinking about, can I watch a video that will show me what photo photosynthesis is really about? And that wasn't possible before. Well, I wish you all the best. Don't go away. When we come back, we're going to talk to you about uh, motherhood and, uh, uh, you know, your accomplishments and all of that. So stay around. You're watching America's first South Asian TV talk show. Don't go away. Women Now will be right back. So welcome back. Now talking about being a woman, you inspire me. You are an immigrant. You came to this country. You had education, but from a very ordinary family back right. in India, you had to assimilate. You had to uh, be a part of this community. And you had four children. That's brave. Now tell me your life and where you had to strike that balance and how you did it. Well, I think I was a, um, I was a very unique case, probably my my case doesn't apply to almost any one. I just happened to go, you know, kind of find a partner for life who just happened to be unique. And we just celebrated our 42nd year of dating. Wow, okay. dating, or, <laughs> dating or wedding? <laughs> wedding, 33 years. Okay, so you dated a long time. You dated a long and time. And he's none other than uh, Mr. Khosla, yes. and the Bay Area knows him wow, as yeah. a guru of technology. So right, so I was really that. lucky to have found someone like that who kind of um, raised the bar for me. So Let me ask you, how did you meet? Uh, actually, he was he went to school with my brother, so our our our, our family was basically uh, the place everyone met, and we just grew up together, mm -hmm. um, and so we just naturally. And you admired him. Uh, I don't know about that at that time. You know, mm -hmm. that's a. What was that moment like when you knew that he was going to be your partner for life? I, I think you just know it. You just know it. At mm -hmm. least in our case. We knew it, mm -hmm. and we stood by that. He was here for four years before um, I came here. We got married, and it just—it's up. I mean, I think those are emotional. I don't know how to explain. It's those. a connection that it's is connection, built, yeah. and you found, and that yes. I think is a blessing. Yeah, but what I, I I stand for at this point myself is that I was 50 when I went back to school after my kids. I went back to Stanford and got another degree, and this was in education because I wanted to find out what is the discourse, why are, what's going on before I made my decision on what I was going to do. And that's something I think every woman should know they can do, no matter what their, what their, uh, you know, what their uh, place in, in the world is, whether you have money or you don't have money. My mother and I never had money before we kind of, you know, kind of lucked out. But it's how you use those, you know, your, what, what's available to you or not available to you. It's a calling that you have to rise you up have, to and you, recognize. You have to decide at some point. There's, there's always, and I found myself doing that a lot too, there was always a reason not to do something. I always found an excuse, no, that's too hard, I'm too old, or, or whatever, right? 
there's always that reason that you can't, you decide not to do something. But at some point, I think you just have to say, I'm going to do it. I may fail, mm -hmm. right? And I never spoke and, you know, I've, I've never been a kind of um, speaking at, the f being comfortable with speaking in public and all that. But, you know, when you have the desire and you keep taking those small steps, you may fail. Mm -hmm. Not to say I haven't failed. The first talk I gave was in front of 800 publishers. I bombed, you know, I didn't, <laughs> didn't really bad. But I didn't stop. I said, okay, so what did I do not do right? Mm -hmm. And you go from that. And it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a great learning. And uh, going back to your partner, I mean, we all want to know how he inspired you and what was that one thing that you learned from him over his uh, course Same thing. of life. Same thing. Failure doesn't mean that you're done with. Failure means what can you do to not fail again mm -hmm. or improve yourself. I mean, really, that's the lesson we should all at some point say to ourselves, OK, I didn't do well in this particular case. What can I learn from it mm -hmm. and not give up, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and again, it's easier to say that there are some situations where you can't afford to fail. You can't afford to fail at a job which is feeding your family, mm -hmm. right? So that becomes something people always, that holds people back. Mm -hmm. And those are situational, right? Um, I, I think at the bottom line, as, as a parent, make sure your children understand that at the, the, the idea of going to school and, and completing school and uh, you know, gathering skills. Today, there's so many things that are happening in the world. I mean, things are just exploding in terms of information, technology, medicine, you name it, right? Mm -hmm. You should be able to uh, know enough about things so you can learn more on your own. Mm -hmm. So build a foundation, and that's what school does. Build those foundations for yourselves so that you can take more risk and take different paths if you so choose. Well, as a woman, as an entrepreneur, as an immigrant and uh, a mother and all of that, I can totally relate to your life and you've broken so many norms and barriers and come yeah. up. Uh, tell me what goes through your mind when you have that much pressure around you, your family, your work. Uh, what do you tell your mind? How do you keep going? You know, I love chocolate. <laughs> so you can always go and eat some chocolate, right? <laughs> when you come to those tough points, okay, uh, sometimes you down the whole damn bar of chocolate and then you go, damn, why did I eat that? No, but uh, it's really hard. You just have to, uh, you know, I think maybe again, we, we've been lucky, Vinod and I, because we support each other in, in those moments where we say, okay, so, you know, doesn't matter get up and go again. And that doesn't matter, get up and go again is really key. Yeah. The support from your family and your spouse is the key thing. And I think uh, if all of you are watching, I think one big reason to succeed is to have a support or a partner yes. uh, that keeps you going because it's not easy. It's not an easy road to be an entrepreneur no. and a woman and uh, face with all of that. I have my colleagues waiting. We have our special Hero of the Month award oh. for you uh, because we feel your contribution oh, you know is huge. Your contribution will be everlasting and making a change. And that's what we are all about. That's what we want to live for, a well, change that we want to bring in our own hands. I'm really honored, but I do have to say that I wouldn't have done this had it not been for my team. You know, those, I mean, the, my, my team at CK12 is phenomenal. You know, they rise up to the occasion, they do. I mean, our content team went uh, out of their way to create. This is uh, in six years. We created the whole curriculum. Curriculum, It's phenomenal. You know, those guys worked really hard. Our, our uh, development team, you know, creating these softwares from nothing. It's phenomenal. Well, nothing is possible without a leader. So yeah. I'm sure that you are in the right place. 
because if your team can deliver, uh, it was only because they look up to you as a leader. Thank you so much for being here with us today. It was a pleasure talking to you. I learned a lot. Well, now I'm joined by Uma and Preeti. Uma, you chose her to be the hero of the month. And Preeti, I think you wanted to ask her a question because you are a student and you wanted to know something from her. Go ahead. Oh, wow. So first of all, I wanted to like really tell you that you've been like an inspiring role model for like a lot of students like me and also like budding entrepreneurs. So the first thing that I wanted to ask you is like, there is a lot of, lot of hesitation kind of with entrepreneurs when they first start out, right? right? So we kind of think, is it the right time or, you know, should you do it later? So when do you actually think that it is the right time to do something? So is it like, uh, like a partner probably who will reinforce the idea or what yeah. is it? Yeah, see, I think the right time is a hard, difficult question to answer because if for different things, it's different times. Right. But at any time that you have an idea, try it, right? right? Because if you don't try it, you're never going to know yeah. whether it was the right idea or not. Okay. So Neeruji, we wanted to really honor you for all the effort that you have done. And one thing that I thought was very remarkable is that the work that you've done in uh, storing all the textbook in a digital form, it is not going to just impact this present generation or the far students in the far part, remote parts of the world right now. It is going to impact the students for the generations to come. You have taken the whole education so many steps forward and we really, really were impressed with that and we want to honor you for all your work and your vision. So like you have mentioned, uh, take a step back and and support of the partner, everything is there in its place. But it does need that spark of interest from one person yeah. to say that there is something there that I think is my calling and I need to do that. And, and you, you chose that and you walked on that path and that is very remarkable. So Thank here you. we would like on behalf of Women Now TV, we want to re uh, reward you as a Women Now hero. Thank you so much. I You're appreciate so this. Um, well, all I ask for is people to use this stuff, right? We will. We will. Yes, yes. yes. Right. Pass the word. Because yes. <laughs> yes. I think we need to help students to right. learn and be passionate. Thank you so much. I'm honored. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. You're watching America's first South Asian TV talk show. Don't go away. Women Now will be right back. We just experienced the spectacular India Now extravaganza in the heart of the Silicon Valley at Santa Clara Fairgrounds. The three-day event was marked by an opening gala at San Jose, attended by a host of state-level dignitaries. This monumental event was an attempt to bring together India and the United States and to explore the infinite possibilities of trade and tourism between the two countries by showcasing the rich history and heritage of India its traditional crafts, exotic cuisines, and exquisite art and culture. The event displayed richly adorned state pavilions in the wide open fairgrounds, and there were over 150 booths inside that displayed a wide range of products starting from beverage concepts to real estate. This has opened up wide avenues for trade and commerce between the two countries and has provided tangible opportunities that would benefit both communities. India now was honored by the presence of the legendary cricketing star of India, Kapil Dev, who drew ecstatic crowds and warmed the hearts of the thousands present by his wit, charm and charismatic appeal. There were foot-tapping and heart-throbbing moments at the performances by artists that thrilled the crowds. Food, fun and frolic fill the atmosphere that created memories that will remain for a long while in the hearts of those who were there. Deeman, you've come all the way from India. I see some beautiful developments happening in the heart of Bangalore or close to Bangalore. Can you explain to us a little bit about the development? This is close to Bangalore. It's a two hours drive from Bangalore which is called Mysore which is a historic city of India or Karnataka and it's closer to uh, Krishna Raja Sagar Dam which is also one of the landmark projects or the the reservoir, biggest reservoir in Karnataka, one of the. And this is an integrated township, what we are doing. It's on 75 acres. And this is one of the kind in Mysore, which Mysore hasn't seen till date. And we are having uh, 405 units of villas and around uh, 700 units of apartments. 
So, and also it is coming up with a residential, commercial, there's a mall, retail, office spaces, and a hospitality, five star spa resort. And these are the things that are coming up here in this project. Well, when you see all this, it sounds so exciting, a spa resort, and then you have a hospital there, and the be beautiful buildings. Now tell me, where do you get this design concept? Are they all integrated in India? Are you getting the designer and the manufacturer and all the, the parts coming from all over the world? The architects are from Delhi, called Romy Khosla. And for the apartments, there are architects from Bangalore, called Thomas Associates. And we have got contractors from, again, from Delhi. Otherwise, the rest of everything is in-house. Now tell me more about uh, when you come to US, what do you expect? What do you expect people to uh, come to you for? So basically like uh, Zohar is a Birla group which is there from almost uh, six decades and uh, we are actually trying to promote this in uh, US and other parts of the globe as well for NRIs, for an investment opportunity. Now tell me more about your specific market. I mean who would be your right audience to buy this? Uh, see here, uh, as I told you, we are looking at um, mainly into investors and uh, since Mysore being a retirement uh, uh, city, so a lot of people who want to retire back, they want to settle down in Mysore. So this is what the crowd we are looking at. Well, that's all we have time for you today. I hope you were inspired by Niru Khosla and you're going to check out her website, ck12.org and spread the word. Thank you so much for watching us. Please like us at Facebook, Women Now TV, and give us your feedback as to how you like the show at info at womennow.tv. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week, same time, same place.